Hey buddy, good morning. Uh, today's uh, video is going to be pertaining to slotted slip track framing system. It's a seismic uh, system that uh, basically allows the wall to go up and down. I just want to touch on some key elements on how to, to make this system perform properly. So uh, I'll get right into the details. Uh, basically your stud length has got to be three quarters inch of a gap. You can see that gap right there. That there needs to be a three quarter inch gap that allows the uh, track to deflect downward like that. Okay, and now the, you can do five eighths is, is the minimum gap and seven eighths is the is the maximum on your gap to be within specifications. Um, so that's the reason why I shoot for the three quarter mark. Now, where I see a lot of people go wrong is that they cut three four studs at a time without measuring every stud, and and you just it a lot of times it doesn't work out. Your studs are too long. Or too short, and if it's out of that five eighths to seven eighths range, then you know basically you're going to have to pull it and replace it with one that is. Your screw location is going to be well. First off, let me get up close and show you that wafer head. That wafer head screw is the only screw that you should be using on this type of wall uh, track. And it's got to be placed dead center in that slot. That slot is an inch and a inch and a half, and so that allows you to deflect upward three quarters of an inch and downward three quarters of an inch. If the wall's not able to go up and down three quarters of an inch in both directions, then that is an ineffective seismic. So there should be movement like that. Now, regarding drywall, where I see, um, I've seen this. Let's say your drywall's coming just straight to the top here. You should never be screwing your drywall to this track because that would void out its ability and its, its range of motion because you're just gonna hard nail it and lock it into place and then you know it won't move. So what I like to do is I like to go five inches down because this is a, a two and a half inch uh, flange. And so, you know, you got to be low enough down so you don't actually pinch off the board because that's going to also, you know, cause, you know, problems with movement. Now, uh, I go a little bit down here. If you it, if you throw a screw here half inch, to, then you're gonna you're gonna get hung up um, a half inch, and you're not gonna have your three quarter inch uh, deflection. So uh, there's a lot of other factors that is uh, regarding uh, this type of wall system, depending on where it's being applied to. If it's a hospital or or if you're just doing a tenant improvement that has the mising walls, like the, the uh, wall that you see behind me, it, it, it goes at a rate upward. And so every stud is going to be longer. And every stud has to be within that three quarter inch, you know, gapage with the screw in the dead center in order for this, that whole wall to be able to, to do what it's designed to do. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and leave it right there. Um, so, if you, uh, if you learned anything off of this video, or if, or if you're really even a seasoned pro and you know all about this, and you can just agree with everything that I said, please feel free to hit like, hit the subscribe button, and... Uh, until next time, you guys have a wonderful day, okay? Okay, so I'm going to just show you guys the... Uh, it's a seismic uh, slotted wall systems.
and uh, basically this this uh, wall is designed to be able to move up and down uh, and to handle deflection with movement of the ground or even movement from up on top of the roof. And uh, as you can see, the the studs are all different lengths, so each one has to be measured individually because uh, the your your stud lengths and gaps need to be perfect.